let us move on then, Scott, to a film that has probably my favourite um, song-based soundtrack ever. Yes, which is an He Got Game, uh, in which we enter the world of the basketball men, in particular the world of basketball men prodigy Ray Allen's Jesus Shuttleworth, coming to the end of his high school career and heavily quoted by universities and professional teams alike. His father, Denzel Washington Jake Shuttleworth, uh, looks on proudly, but from behind bars. He's approached with an offer from the state governor's office, namely to get Jesus to sign up with Gov's old uni in return for time off his sentence. So Jake is sent off on a work lease of sorts and set up by his watchers in a cheap and sleazy hotel where he'll meet love interest and hooker with a heart of gold archetype, Mila Hovitz's Dakota, but initially has much less success in meeting with his son. Fair enough, I suppose. After all, he was put in jail for the accidental death of his wife following some not-at-all accidental domestic violence, bound to put a strain on the familial bonds. Uh, while Denzel's the marquee name on the acting side of things, it's actually your actual basketballman, Ray Allen, that's got all the, t- the decisions to make and the souls to search as a rotating smorgasbord of people come to Jesus trying to influence his decision or simply freeload off of him, be that family members, scouts, college reps or his girlfriend, Rosario Dawson's Lala. Thankfully, Alan's up to the task, and having no knowledge of the state of late 90s basketball reality, I did not know that he was an actual fact, an actual basketballman, and if Wikipedia hadn't told me, I doubt I'd have guessed it. Although perhaps his undeniable athleticism on the basketball pitch should have clued me in. So, top work, fella. Uh, with terrific performances across the board and a killer soundtrack, He Got Game is one of Spike Lee's most easily enjoyable films, and perhaps the easiest watch of his so far. However, that breeziness does rather come at the expense of any kind of deeper connection with anything in the film, which is unusual usual for Lee. Um, he's not exactly known for his subtlety. Uh, he Got Game presents us with an interesting bunch of characters, for sure, and I enjoy my time with them. But at the end, I'm not sure I've really learned all that much about them, or that they've learned all that much about themselves. There's some other minor qualms I could list, although pointing out any factual flaws in either the scouting process or the foster arrangements seems a bit silly in a film with an actual teleporting basketball. So the only ones <laughs> that I'll mention is, is that this is the first of Lee's films that's gone over two hours that I felt probably shouldn't have done, and it's not going to be the only time in this episode that we'll be saying that, or I will at least. Uh, however, it's not that big of an issue here, and I'd be perfectly well entertained by Denzel Washington reading a phone book for two hours. So again, very watchable and enjoyable film, but for me, doesn't ultimately have quite the impact of some of his prior work. No, um, I'm largely where you are, Scott. It's it's entertaining, but I think the problem is I feel it's a bit too sympathetic towards Denzel Washington's character because he's not a good person. Yeah. And the film seems to be slightly more forgiving because I hate the ending. I <laughs> hate the ending because yeah. it's so unmerited. Yeah. You know, um, the son Jesus should have basically told um, Jake to get stuffed. Yeah, you know it's. Uh, but then he ends up making the decision he does. Not, no, he doesn't deserve that. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it. It kind of presents Jake as an already reformed character without showing any of the steps to how he would have become reformed. We're just supposed to take it as read that no, he's he's all right now. Yeah. Um, where and it's not really done any of the work to, to do that, and it's quite effective at setting up as a, a villain in flashback sequences. So, yeah, it doesn't quite gel together well, on that level. Yeah, it's like there's a missing scene um, or a missing sequence. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, there are moments where you see that Jake has a, a more level head in his shoulders, at least in the past, and he is reasonably up front with Jesus about why he's approaching him when he is. Yeah. Rather than using subterfuge, he just comes straight out and says. But at the same time, that the the aggression that was between them in the basketball court at the end, and I, I yeah. really don't understand why Jesus just didn't say, you know, take a hike, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Um, before even taking um, involved with the bet that they make. So that's kind of frustrating. Uh, but yeah, it's still quite entertaining. Again, yeah, Denzel Washington, I could watch in anything. Yeah. I, th- I think actually maybe that's slightly to the film's detriment because again it's I think you should dislike Jake more but it's because it's Denzel Washington you yeah. don't <laughs> yeah there are a few actors that happens with and he's definitely one of them it's like yeah, he, he, I want this character should be more unlikable but Denzel you know yeah <laughs> uh, it's quite an interesting choice of soundtrack too actually the the public enemy soundtrack of a he get game it probably is as I said my favorite like song based soundtrack on anything I've listened to that so many times over the years in the last two decades yeah. it's 
curious though that it's actually barely in the film at all. There's the occasional snippet mm-hmm. on the radio, maybe, and yeah. there's other than the end credits, there's maybe one piece that you actually hear more of. Whereas most of the soundtrack comes from Aaron Copeland. Yeah. <laughs> which is unusual, but actually I think really works. Even particularly the the opening scenes. There's just something kind of light and uplifting about that music that opens the film. Mm-hmm. And that actually did a lot to set my mood for the film. I can't quite describe it. It's it's just quite a light piece, but it's there's something kind of hopeful about it. Yeah. And I didn't actually check which particular piece that was at the time. There's a few famous bits of Copeland's work in there as well, some perhaps lesser known things. But it's uh, Aaron Copeland in a basketball film is not the, <laughs> not most the obvious, obvious thing, yeah. But it's actually, it works really well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been just textured in nicely and for the most part it works maybe because of the incongruity of it yeah I, I think maybe it's more just the it's a kind of hopeful nature of a lot of the music that's used that suggests maybe basketball is an escape which is what it would be for Jesus there's that kind of idea to it but yes it, the, the big problem with the film itself though is that it does go on a bit too long it's not it's not quite got the substance for it mm-hmm. um, and also yeah, this is a, a thing that bothers me a lot, as you know, Scott. I, I know it has some degree of annoyance for you as well, but the casting of, you know, really ancient people as a part of high school students. Yeah. yeah. Rosario Dawson, 19, bang on, no problem. Ray Allen was 23 when this was made, or 22, 23. I'll take it, given that they particularly want someone who can play basketball okay. Yeah. But his cousin is played by a 33-year-old. Yeah. 32-year-old. <laughs> nope. <laughs> It's meant to be the same age as I'm. Nope. <laughs> Stop doing that. Yeah. We're not fooled. <laughs> Just because he's wee doesn't make him look young. <laughs> it's not how aging works. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's worth watching. But it's, um, I don't know, I, I kind of want something a bit more from it. Yeah, I think ultimately, it, and I, I, again, and usually for Lee, he's not normally shy about hitting you upside the head with his message <laughs> in, in his movies. And this one, I'm not sure quite what the ultimate point of it was, unless it's don't kill your wife. <laughs> um, but but a lot of it is, um, you know, because so much of it is about uh, Jesus trying to come to terms with what everyone wants from him. And at the end of the day, I'm not quite sure how he got to the answer that he did, even if that is, in fact, an answer. Um, yeah, I had a bit of a case of the so what's when you get to the end of it. Uh, I enjoyed my time with it, but when you think, so what exactly was the point of that? I, I can't really give you a distinct answer for it. I enjoyed my time with it. I enjoyed all the characters. I enjoyed all the interplays. Uh, but what the ultimate message of it, other than work out what people are trying to get from you is I'm not quite sure what exactly what I can what's my action from this um, not necessarily that it needs to have a message but it's just it seems like it was stretching towards something but not quite hitting anything now, it has also made me wonder and I know it's a big deal but quite how much money there is in college basketball in the United States oh yes yes because the corrupt parole officers are just handing them hundreds of dollars yes <laughs> yeah um, it's quite strange. Yeah, 